this video we're going to talk about the simple method of point deforming the renderable meshes with the sim meshes. We're going to start with the pans. Okay, here we are at the output of our combined sim. So what we want to do is use a version that has enough frames for us to test. So I'm using the previous version. I'm on, working on 30 right now. It's simming. But version 29 has all the frames. So I'm going to use that for now for this testing. And what we'll do is we'll put a null right here so that we can get the output results of our sim here. We'll actually call that out combined sim. Okay, we'll color that black. Now we have the option of adding a vellum post-process node here later to do smoothing if we want to, but I like to control that with paint nodes, so maybe we won't put that in here and we'll smooth each piece as necessary to get the sim across. So we want to start a point to form. I like to put, if you look at the bird's eye view of our setup here, I want to keep the deform node directly underneath the sim sort of down here. And I probably should keep this off to the side, uh, but for now I'm leaving it here because there's sort of this nice little nook here, so I'll just kind of maybe move this up a little bit. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll kind of put everything across here. Here's you, what we can, you can see what we're doing with the cloak buttons over here. So we're just going to kind of drop everything down here. So underneath here I will drop my point to form and we'll start building it. So point to form. So for the first input of our point to form we're going to need the renderable geometry. So where will we get that? Well let's go ahead and get the nicest renderable geometry that we can, ones that we smoothed that might look real good right before we chopped it or right before we remeshed it. So what we're going to do is take a little null out here and put a little null on the end there. And what we'll do is we'll rename that and we'll name that high, call them high whatever, so high pants. Okay, color it whatever you want. I'll color it purple. So this is the geometry that I want to deform here. So we'll put a little object merge node here, and that way we can copy and paste this setup over and over and over again. So search for that node. And up here we put, we just gotta look for high, high pants. For the second input of our point form, we want the rest state of our sim mesh. We'll just create an object merge, OM. For this, we'll go ahead and use the out combine sim null that we just created in the previous step. So that one's coming in there. Uh, what we, we don't want the whole sim though, we just want the pants. So we'll do a blast node and we'll keep everything that's just pants. We're just going to keep pants. So I'm going to blast everything at the moment. And we'll say add pants is equal to one. Now, it won't come up right away until you actually declare points. So now you can see the pants disappeared, so we'll just delete non-selected, and now we're down to the pants. Now where did this attribute come from? If you'll remember, we did put a bunch of attributes. We have an attribute wrangle that we put before everything, and up here we declared that that attribute was an integer and it was one up here. So this is forethought so that we could be able to blast away what we don't need here. So here are our pants. Now what we need to do is time shift the rest. So time shift, and we'll get a rest state here, and we'll put that here. And we'll time shift to the start frame. So Alt E, and then we'll put F start here, and accept. And then we'll take another node directly from just the deforming pants, and we'll see what we get here. So if we scrub our timeline here, we should be able to see the pants deform, get some nice wrinkles. One of the things um, that looks kind of bad right now is it looks kind of soft, and you can kind of see some of these points are shearing because the radius is so large on our point to form. So if we go down uh, 0 0.05, you'd see they're starting to split out here a little bit. And so I like to go down to like 0 0.01 for this particular scale, then we can start to see this. Now, you can see that we're starting to see some bent quads here, which is not very good. It's going to look horrible. So what we're going to end up probably doing is using an attribute blur to smooth this later. Okay, that looks pretty good for the pants right now. I'm getting some nice deformation on this. So we're getting pants deformed here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put these down for a number of objects. So we're going to just copy and paste this and we'll do it for the belt loops. We'll do it for various objects. So let's just go through and figure out which ones we might want to do this with. So the undershirt, no, but the undershirt buttons, yes. And I'll explain that next. The undershirt will be next. The boot flaps, for sure, yes. Um, the top coat itself, no, but the top coat buttons and loops, yes. And the belts, uh, I think we could probably do, uh, we can break each one of these belts out separately. The chest belts should be fine. So what we'll do is we'll just copy that for the belts as well. And we don't have to worry about the cloak because we're actually simming the renderable geometry there. So let's go ahead and lay down uh, duplicates of each one of these. I'm going to go ahead and pause the vidcap and then we'll come back and take a look at each one of these. Okay, so I'm going through and putting in these 
high nodes that are branching out where the high geometry is coming from. I just wanted to record a little bit of what I'm doing here so that you can see it. So I'm alt dragging from here. So if I just delete this one, I'm clicking on this and alt dragging it over to get a copy. Then I'm looking down this chain and as long as I haven't chopped or or uh, remeshed, this is the point. So it, at this point here, it looks like I'm going to volume. So I'm just going to pop this in here. And this is the chest belts. So I'm going to say high chest belts. And I'm just going to go through and use this logic to find locations where I need to. So I'm going to continue to do that. Recounting what I said earlier, we are using the renderable mesh to sim for the cloak, but I did do a divide to put some triangles in there, so I am putting a space here. We are going to have to uh, point deform this, but we can use a really, really low point deform value for the radius because they're going to be literally on top of each other. So we can do a point zero 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 one, and it should move exactly upon uh, the renderable mesh should move exactly the same as the cloak. Uh, we'll look at that. Okay, I've gone through and put in little nulls for all the high-res geometry, the best points uh, for each one of these. And now I will go down and duplicate this for each one of those and see if we can merge them out and see what we can get. Okay, so I did put the temp cloak sim in here because remember the cloak currently isn't part of the combined sim. And I am testing it here, so the moment of truth is here. And as, as long as we have really low values on our point form here, we should be able to get exactly point on point so it'll look exactly like the renderable sim so if we were to bring in our collision object up here where are we we're right up here you can see our guy here so you can actually see the results here it's not too bad so this is the results of the latest sim not too bad fix the sword poking and if we scroll around we shouldn't see any spiking in the point form whatsoever so it's looking pretty good this methodology as you can see here let's go ahead and bring this up here is working for a lot of the objects and here are the cloak buttons so I'll go ahead and just move all these up here with the cloak buttons so what we might want to do is merge all of these pieces of geometry into one geometry and then I'll talk about how to properly Olympic export them but first we have the issue of our top shirt here I mean sorry our undershirt and our top shirt uh, we need to do a separate method for those and I'll go into that in the next video